Howdy everybody, I'm Luke from Riata Ranch and Riata Horsemanship and today we, we have a customer who, who has a horse that has a difficult time trailer loading. He apparently with a saddle on and with a mule in a, in a big trailer can jump on the trailer but with his two horse trailer, a smaller trailer and if the horse doesn't have a saddle on he just braces up and won't, won't jump in the trailer. His name is Mo. he's right back here, he's a black horse and we're going to try to fix this problem in the next few minutes. Hopefully it won't take longer than an hour. But we'll get some film of that and then we're going to uh, get everybody this video. So if you have trailer loading problems, you can see how to correct that. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to narrate the rest of this. Um, this is about, it took us about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, to get Mo to be comfortable getting on this two horse trailer. You can see in the corner there's a two horse trailer there near us. And what I'm doing right now, the first thing I do is teach the horse to go forward off of my cues. My first cue is to, to hold the rope and to point in the direction I want the horse to go. So I'm pointing to, them to my left and directing Mo to go forward to my left. Then I use, if he doesn't go forward, I use the stick and I start to tap him lightly. First I tap the air, so I ask him as nicely as possible, and then I start to tap his neck and his shoulder area. And Mo is a little bit of a dull horse, and he needed a little bit more tapping in order to get him to move forward. But as soon as he starts to move forward, as soon as, he's take, as he takes one step forward, I release that pressure. I drop my arm and I drop the stick. And now I'm going to guide him to go in the other direction. So I have the rope in my right hand. I'm pointing. And in that direction, Mo actually didn't need any tapping on his neck. I tapped the air a little bit. I swung the stick a little bit in the air and he moved forward. So now as you can see, he's moving forward quite comfortably. without the need of the stick. I'm pointing and swinging the stick a little because I'm getting him to increase his speed just a little bit. And as you notice, every time I change directions, I'm looking at his hips. What I want him to do is when I look at his hips, I want him to swing the hips away or move the hindquarters away and face me with two eyes. So he's moving his hips away, facing me with two eyes. Then I point him in the other direction, he goes through, I look at his hips, he moves them away and looks and faces me with two eyes. Now I'm doing what I call a pass-through exercise, where I'm moving Mo in between me and another object. In this instance, and usually I start out this way, by f I first teach him to go forward off of my cue, and then I move a close to a fence, not real close initially, but I get relatively close to a fence and I get Mo to pass through between me and the fence. This natu horses naturally feel a little bit claustrophobic when they get between a human and another object. So what I'm going to what I'm doing is teaching him to feel comfortable going through there and not not and less claustrophobic. So I'm pointing and tapping and in this instance Mo decided I'm going to go backwards instead of forward. So all I did was follow him, keep pointing. You see how I kept my arm raised and I kept tapping lightly on his neck until he finally moved forward. I released the pressure. And then we'll do it a few more times. I don't spend a lot of time here for trailer loading exercises, but it is one of the necessary steps to get a horse comfortable and less claustrophobic. Because one of the biggest problems with trailer loading is a horse feels claustrophobic by getting in the trailer. We want him to feel comfortable in a closed, in, in an enclosed space. As you notice right there, I raised my elbow and he backed up. Now he overreacted a little bit. So I'm just swinging the stick, pointing, and then getting him to go forward again. But what Mo was doing was when he was, he was moving the hindquarters and facing me with two eyes, Sometimes he would get too close. He would almost bump into me with his head. So I had to move my elbow up to back him off of me. 
you want to make sure that you keep your horse out of your space. Clinton Anderson calls it his personal hula hoop space. He uses his stick, draws a circle around him, and he says if that horse comes into that space, um, he's going to do something about it to get him out of that space because a horse that will start to crowd you <clears throat> can eventually step on you or push you over or, or really hurt you if you're in an enclosed space and he doesn't respect your space. So now I'm doing the pass through exercise again this time with the back of the trailer as my the, the opposite surface. Horses initially they, they don't feel comfortable around the trailer. It's a big object that's scary to them. It doesn't move at this point but it is a large object that's scary. So I did the pass through exercises on the back of the trailer then I usually go to the right side of the trailer and do the pass through exercise again. So I point, he goes through, yield the hindquarters, and I had to bump him back just a little bit. I moved my elbows. I didn't touch his face with my elbow, but I threatened to, and if he didn't get out of my space, I would tap him on the on the mouth. And there he respected my space more. You could see there's a space between his nose and my shoulder. I had to back him up a little there with my elbow. Now there you, you can see I raised my hand even higher and I raised the stick high. That's because when he was come passing through to the left, he was crowding my space. So he was getting more into my space than he was the trailer space. So I wanted to let him know, hey, if you move into my space, you're going to run into my stick. It's very, very vital that you don't allow a horse to get into your space, unless you're asking him to. But in this exercise, he should, he should keep a healthy distance from you and get closer to the trailer than he does to you. So I went ahead and did that pass-through exercise on the left. And now I'm doing what I call sending exercise. I try to keep my feet as still as possible. I point and I send him all the way around and he'll stop because of the trailer. I did that for a minute or so, a minute or two. Now I've opened the back of the trailer and I'm doing a little bit of a lunging exercise where now I'm picking up the speed, getting some energy in his feet. Now that he's responding much better to my cueing, I'm picking up that energy because I'm going to start. I'm going to start to get him to crave oxygen. That's what Clinton Anderson likes to call it, craving. They, if you get a horse to crave oxygen and you let them rest, wherever they rest, they're going to like that place. So that's one of the keys with trailer loading. Now right there, because I'm increasing the energy in Mo's feet, he gets a little bit rowdy a couple of times, but you see he's getting into a canter. This is all new exercise for him. And horses are going to do things, they're going to act out just a little bit because they don't exactly know what's what I'm asking of them. But as I increase his energy, I'm pointing and I'm actually, I'm actually whipping the ground in circular motion to get him to move forward. That's asking him to go forward. If he doesn't pick up speed, I'll actually tap him on the butt with that, with the string. So I'm whipping the ground and I just tapped him a little bit because he wasn't responding and immediately he began to respond. And those of you who think that um, tapping him with the whip or the, or the stick is going to make him, you know, hypersensitive or, or jumpy or fidgety. It doesn't. I see that, how he, how he reared up. He does that basically three times. Once, 
once a little while ago, once just then, and then he does it even worse in a little bit. That's just him trying to figure out what I'm asking him to do. And the only answer, and he thought maybe the answer was rearing up. I don't pay much attention to that. I just keep the pressure on until he goes forward, then take the pressure off. No worries. I'm not worried at all about him rearing up. See that? That was the worst one he reared up. Now, what I, w what I was doing as I increased the speed, I was yielding the hindquarters and getting him to face me, but then I was also yielding the forequarters. As you can see, to get him to turn back around, I'm stepping in front of him. See that? I stepped in front of him and getting him to move his front end across and around. So I was, I was teaching him to, to yield his forequarters as well as his hindquarters. Now I brought him to the back end of the trailer. I'm pointing in the direction I want him to go, which is in the trailer. And then I'm lightly moving the stick, tapping the air with the stick, and then lightly tapping him on the neck and shoulder area, basically neck and withers area. And as soon as he steps forward, I release that pressure. When he comes back out, I point, tap. Now he did this three or four times, four or five times probably, where he actually moved his hindquarters back around towards me. And I had to tap him a little bit harder around the butt and under his flanks to get him to move his hindquarters away from me. Or what he was doing was getting in my space with his back end. And that's of course can create a dangerous situation where he could kick me or something. So there he goes, he moved his hindquarters around. Now he didn't do it intentionally, he wasn't going to try to kick me. But you have to make sure and let him know that that's not the, that's not the space that you want his butt to be. His hind end is close to me and I whack him pretty, pretty good right there towards the hind end to move him away from me. He has to understand that that's not, that's getting into my space. There I go again. And he moved forward. And again, you're going to find every horse is different. Some horses will do this very easily. Some will take a little while. But you have to be patient. Point. Tap. And get him to step up on the trailer. Now, I, I try not to let him go all the way on the trailer. He could have easily gone on the trailer long before this. But I'm stopping him. Now, here's a point where he acts up and decides, I'm going to keep backing up, kind of like he did over at the wall. But I just keep pointing, keep tapping, stay with him until he moves forward. Just relax. Don't get upset about it. Moved his hind end towards me again. So I just bump him out of the way, point him forward. So I want him to step up into the trailer with his, both his front feet and then to stand and rest. Now in this instance, I, f I f eventually let him get on before I had him stand and rest, before he actually completed that task of standing and resting with the two front feet. I'm okay with that. It's no big deal. After he's on, then I back him up and I'm going to back him straight up. And Mo is excellent in backing up. The reason I do that is to teach a horse that when they come off of a trailer, they don't immediately turn. You want to, especially these smaller trailers, you want to make sure that the horse knows how to back off of the trailer. You don't want the horse with a bad behavior of turning around in this small trailer. If you've got a really large stock trailer, and I haul, I haul 10 to 12 horses at a time sometimes with a large stock trailer, I don't mind horses turning around. Backing every horse out of the trailer from the front is a little bit cumbersome and unnecessary. But these smaller trailers, anywhere from a, well, a one horse trailer, they usually can't turn around. But these two, three, and even sometimes four horse trailers, you want to teach them to back up off of the trailer. And 
Now I'm going to get him to stand there halfway and just relax. You see that? He's got his two front feet up in the trailer and he's relaxed and I backed him off and I'm going to get him to do it again. It's a process. But I guarantee you that as you continue through this process, you're going to have success in trailer loading. Now what happened right there is Mo tried to turn around in the trailer. So I had to use my stick and, and kind of put some pressure on his head and turn him back around. I didn't want him learning that bad habit of turning around in that small two horse trailer. And I think here he finally stops and relaxes with the two front feet in the back of the trailer. I'm rubbing him with a stick, I'm petting his neck, petting his withers, petting his forehead. I even go into his flank and on his butt. I'm just just helping him relax. Hey, it's okay to just stand here halfway in the trailer. No worries. Get him to stand there again. Get him to relax. I'm helping him feel comfortable. Hey, I'm halfway into this enclosed scary area and nothing's wrong. I'm getting petted. Nothing's hurting me. And now I'm moving him, I'm purposefully moving him fully into the trailer and backing him up. Moving him fully into the trailer and backing him back out. So by this time, Mo is pretty comfortable getting on and off the trailer. And again, I'm just backing him up after getting him off to help him understand that he's not to turn around when he's when he's either in the trailer or even when he first comes off of the trailer. Horses are very good at anticipating what you want them to do. So as a, if, if a horse learns to turn around in the trailer, they're going to do that and you're going to have a hard time undoing that behavior. If a horse wants to turn immediately after he gets off the trailer, that's going to happen w as well and he's going to get into a, a bad habit of doing that and start anticipating that in the trailer as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push him a little bit harder and this is called the craving craving the trailer exercise is what I call it. So I want him to think if I can get on that trailer I get to rest. As long as I'm outside this trailer that's open, I've got to work. So I'm pointing, spanking the ground, and getting him to move into a canter. By now he's starting to get a little sweaty, breathe a little heavier. His heart rate's gone up. His breathing rate's gone up. And as I'm doing this, as I'm lunging him forward, I'm moving toward the trailer because what I want to do is get close enough to the trailer where I just kind of let him go. And again, he acted up here a little bit, decided I'm going to go backwards instead of forward. And I just follow him, keep the pressure on until he moves forward again. Every horse is going to be different, but just keep this in mind. If it feels like the horse is going backwards, if you got somewhere and now the horse decided to do something, act out, and it's and it, it it's a it's worse behavior than what what he had before, than what he was doing before. Don't worry about it. 
just keep the pressure on and get them to do it again. Sometimes horses will revert to bad behavior throughout your exercise. Don't worry about that. So doing a little of the craving the trailer exercise again. And I think at this point I do it from this, the right side. As I was talking earlier, um, you could see that I had a lot longer length on the lead rope and I was getting him to lunge around me, craving some oxygen, craving the trailer. And he went forward and got on the trailer on a long lead. So now he's starting to pick up the idea and learn that if he gets on the trailer, he gets to rest. So I first teach him how to get on the trailer and off the trailer. And then I teach him to crave being on the trailer. This is a vital step to trailer loading because if they don't crave being on the trailer, they might revert to old behaviors. So I'm pointing, I'm on a long lead and look what he does. He just steps right in the trailer. Training horses is all about horse psychology, getting in the mind of a horse. Horses by nature are, are lazy. They would rather not do something. They would rather not exercise than exercise. I would say in most cases, you have the very few rare cases out there where a horse craves exercising, but usually that's motivated by something else, but we can talk about that later. But Mo now has figured out, hey, if I get on this trailer, I get to rest. So I'm backing him up and I don't even have to cue him to get back on the trailer. I just give him his head and he steps right back on the trailer. And there he goes. Nice and easy, nice and comfortable. At this point, after about probably 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes. He is craving being on the trailer. Now this is Mo's owner. His name is Kevin and he watched the whole training for about 45 minutes and then he went ahead and took Mo and just led him right onto the trailer. Had no issues whatsoever. I told him to give me a call back in the afternoon and let me know if he trailered easily in the afternoon about four or five hours later. He said he did. He sent me a, an, a picture and a nice message saying that it was wonderful what we had done for him and he was very pleased and was telling everybody about it. So we look forward to helping other people do the same and we'll see you in the saddle.